Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, I had a short night because yesterday evening there was this publication of the committee Cohen, which did some research on the riots in Haar. And Haar is a small village in Groningen in the Netherlands, and we were faced with an awkward situation in Haar in September. And I wanted to discuss with you what happened, but also take a closer look at the research of the committee Cohen, what they did, and what their conclusions were. Um, in Hare, in, on a Friday evening, there were lots of youngsters and other peoples coming to that small village. It's a very, very small village. There's not a lot to do. And they were going to party. But there was no party. And at the end, the village was crowded, and more and more people were there, not to party, to, but to make some damages. This was uh, a, a picture as well of what happened over there. And this is a supermarket after the people left. So it's quite ridiculous what happened over there. But luckily, all people having an opinion about this were sure that we had to call this the Facebook riot. So what I hoped was that today we would find out why these riots were the Facebook riots. But to be honest, I don't have a single clue why people called it the Facebook riots. And even the committee Cohen didn't have one a right argument for calling it the Facebook riots. And I wanted to share that with you because today the topic and the theme is time changers. And I was wondering if it's true, if it's really true that today we would find out that we are just controlled by Facebook, acting as idiots, demolishing buildings, creating fires. But, well, there is not a single clue for that in the uh, conclusions of the uh, committee. So Facebook is a platform with lots of events. You can find events where you can go, where you can attend, um, you can see who is joining you, and it's a very fun place to see what to do on a Friday evening or what to do in the weekend. Um, but at one day, there was this birthday party event. A girl called Merte, she was 16, posted this, invited her friends, and these friends invited other friends and other friends and other friends. And at a certain point of time, there were 20,000 people invited, while this village only has got 80,000 citizens. To be honest, I do not think that when there is a Facebook event and 20,000 people are invited, that automatically leads to that these people actually will go to, uh, to Hare and join the party. That's not really true. Another complicating factor was that people seeing this invitation started to talk about Project X, which is a movie. You can see the picture in Project X. A party was really getting bigger, bigger, and getting out of hand. And uh, well, what happened um, is not that they changed the time and date of the event into the past, so that all people that received this invitation would just not see this event anymore. And of course, these most of them were kids, didn't write down the event in their, in their agenda. That's not true. So by changing the time and date of the event into the past, it was possible to just, in a quiet way, remove the event. They didn't do that. Another thing is that you could send a cancellation message to the people that were invited, that there wouldn't be a party, and at the end, removing the event. And when they did that, without other stuff they did, then I think that um, it was possible to make sure that what happened in Hare was, uh, was prevented. So this is Rob. Rob is the major of Hare. We've got lots of majors in the Netherlands, and they're great people. They know how to control an area. But suddenly, Rob was confronted with something he didn't know a lot about, because he heard that there was a Facebook invitation with 20,000 people that were invited that were planning to come to his village. And what did he do? Did he call people for advice? Did he create a good plan on how to, to tackle this? No. He was panicking. Because he, did, he didn't know what would happen if such a Facebook event was published and 20,000 people would be invited. He wasn't experienced with that. So he thought, what if, what if 
What if? What if all these people would come to Haren? What if even more people would come to Haren? What if even more people come to her, he was thinking. Well, at the funeral of Michael Jackson, 20 million people attended the Facebook event. And of course, these 20 million people didn't actually go to the funeral of Michael Jackson. And every average Facebook user knows that you receive these invitations tens of times a week. And you can just click yes or no whether you would attend or not the event. And of course, a lot of people click the yes button, especially when it's funny what you just did. What they had to do was to make sure that the people would get demobilized. And of course, there is one thing that really, and we all know that from research, really happens in changing people's behavior in a good way and making sure that they do, don't start a fire or demolish uh, a shop. And that is maximizing the risk of imprisonment. So let's see what they did. Let's see if the things that Rob and his team did really were about demobilization and maximizing the risk of imprisonment. Of course, they canceled the event. Well, that's quite clear why and how, and that's a good thing. But immediately, they started talking about alternative locations for the event. So you cancel the event, and after the cancelization, you start talking about another location. Is that logical? No, I don't think so. And of course, all different types of artists like Yellow Claw said, well, if you find an alternative location, we are prepared to come and join the party and to make some fun and music. And they started tweeting about that as well. They were also discussing changing the date and time of the event. They removed the street signs. I am really not sure when was the last time you saw a kid walking down the street with the street map, but they removed the street signs. Of course, they said that is to prevent demolishing kids, but my sister said, without knowing what the reason was of removing the signs, that she felt arrest. Like, if she was not able to find the address of the event if they removed the street signs, it was an invitation to come to Hare and to prove that they could find the house of Merte. One of the last messages they published was that Merte fled from the house. And at Friday afternoon, the main article on Nu.nl, one of the major news sites and lots of other websites, was that the major appointed a new location, a soccer field, with two mobile lightning units. But there was no event, there was no party, it was canceled, you were not welcome, you were not allowed to come there, there was nothing to do, but there was this soccer field. Mm. At the same time, there was a kid of 17 years old, and with four friends, he was able to put up a live stream with 50,000 simultaneous viewers. You didn't saw at the live stream that the police was arresting people drinking alcohol or trying to remove larger groups. No, you, you saw them laughing, chatting, dancing. There were some people with a ghetto blaster music. The police was watching, but there was no party. They had to take down the live stream, but they didn't do that. I was able to see what was happening over there from minute to minute while they tried to change our perception of what happened into that there was nothing happening. It was not true. They were lying and they were spreading false and misleading information while younger people were even more invited than they were before. So what has Facebook to do with these riots? I asked. And I hoped that today I would find the answer and that Job Cohen and his team would find the answer and tell us what the role of Facebook was. I don't think Facebook had a role. In the two weeks that the event was published on Facebook without additional media attention, there were almost no messages on social media about Hare, about Project X, or about Merten. When the media, and that's their role, they just do their job, started publishing the information about what the major decided, people started communicating about what happened, also on social media, but also on the coffee corner, in classes, by text messaging each other. 
Everyone was talking about this. 60 million Dutch people, not the 20,000 people that were invited on Facebook. 60 million people knew that there was something to happen and going to happen in Haren. And from these 60 million people, three to 5,000 people were coming to Haren. These were not people that were invited two and a half week in advance on Facebook while they didn't pay any attention on it. But still, every single medium I saw on the television in the newspaper was talking about Facebook riots. It reminds me of the War of the Worlds in 1938. There was a radio broadcast on CBS radio. It was a radio game, a radio play. And they were broadcasting the Martians entering Earth, trying to conquer us. And the Americans started believing it because the radio told that there were Martians while it was a radio play. Twelve and a half thousand newspaper articles were published in a few weeks' time about what was going to happen with the Martians. People were screaming, running, and they're going away from their houses because they were, they were scared of what was going to happen. We call this mass hysteria. And to be honest, I really think that this is what happened in Haren as well. Not only in Haren, in the Netherlands, in Europe, and in all the countries that published about what was going to happen in Haren. And that is something else than a Facebook riot. Facebook doesn't have anything to do with what happened in Haren. And if you're wondering how people could go to Haren and then suddenly start acting strange, you should read about the Stanford prison experiment. It was an experiment on this university, and students were asked whether to play the role of a prisoner or someone that kept people in prison. And after a few days, after a few days, they started acting unhumanly. They started treating, mistreating the prisoners. The prisoners were getting mad, screaming, wanting, wanted to leave the experiment. People were acting as they were expected to do. And that's the whole use of this research. And what in Hare happened is exactly the same. We were talking about it. Hundreds and thousands of tweets, news broadcasts, people talked about it. I received text messages from people. What do you expect that that's going to happen over there? We expected that this was going to happen. And the people that went there, because the government started pronouncing all these interesting things, they were just there and acting like that because they had to do that, because that was the social setting we created. By the way, there was no mobile cell phone reach during the riots. So during the riots, Facebook wasn't involved at all over there. <coughs> and besides that, even, even if we could or can prove that Facebook played and other social media played a role in what happened in Haren, we shouldn't do that. Because we are the technology and we are responsible. Thank you. Three, two, one, ready.